Hello, and welcome to this bite-sized glimpse into the world and works of the metaphysical poets. In this video, we will cover who were the metaphysical poets, and when and where were they historically situated. So to begin, who were these writers who came to be known as the metaphysical poets? Nearly all of them were born into well-to-do families in England and Wales during the height of the Renaissance, and were most active in the early to mid-17th century. In addition to composing poems, they distinguished themselves in the public arena as soldiers, statesmen, and clergymen. Best known among them is the lawyer, parliamentarian, and priest, John Donne. But the group also included fellow clergymen George Herbert and Richard Crashaw, as well as Andrew Marvell, Henry Vaughan, and Abraham Cowley. The group's name can be attributed to writer and critic Samuel Johnson, who wrote over a century later in his influential book, Lives of the Poets. The metaphysical poets were men of learning, and to show their learning was their whole endeavor. But unluckily resolving to show it in rhyme, instead of writing poetry, they only wrote verses. Clearly Johnson was not a fan, but it wasn't until T.S. Eliot sang the praises of metaphysical poetry in the early 20th century that these works gained the prominence that they enjoy today. Now let's take a closer look at when and where the metaphysical poets lived. England in the late Renaissance was a place of high contrast, where the arts and sciences flourished amidst a backdrop of political and religious turmoil. Dramatic works by William Shakespeare, Christopher Marlowe, and Ben Jonson helped to elevate English literature to unprecedented heights. Meanwhile, the age of discovery revealed a physical world much vaster and more varied than anyone had ever imagined. Francis Bacon, known as the father of empiricism, gave scientists new intellectual tools to investigate the natural world in his 1620 work, Novum Organum. Soon afterward, the Royal Society of London held its first official gathering of scientists, physicians, and natural philosophers in 1660. Meanwhile, political conflict arose from long-standing tensions between Protestants and Catholics, as well as from a growing middle class, hungry for reform. Key events included the formation of the Church of England in 1534, signaling England's break from the Catholic Church, the Great Puritan migrations in the 1620s and 1630s, and the English Civil Wars in the 1640s. This last conflict saw a beheaded King Charles I, replaced by the Puritan Oliver Cromwell, as England briefly became a republic. The stringently pious rule of the Commonwealth was short-lived, however, and the monarchy was restored in 1660 with Charles II as king, ushering in a new era of greater liberality and a renewed interest in the arts. The works of the metaphysical poets are very much a product of their age, reflecting the competing pull of secular exploration and religious conviction that characterized England in the tumultuous transition between the Renaissance and the Restoration eras. Next time, we'll explore key aspects of metaphysical poetry by looking at representative works to see what their characteristics are and how they compare to neighboring eras of English literature. All works and images from today's video are cited in the notes below. Thank you, and I hope to see you in my next video.